Welcome everyone, and today we're going to do a Lightroom tip, and it's all about file naming. So, is it strictly Lightroom? No, but I'm going to show you it in Lightroom. But I think it's an important thing you should do with your photos. Don't leave it to chance. Sort it out in the first place. It will make a world of difference later on in life, because we get involved in these things. Things grow, and then we go, oh, I can't find anything. Makes a difference. So, let's go over into Lightroom. Let's have a look at this today. So we've got here in Lightroom, as you can see, the file name is underscore TL52665. Means absolutely bloody nothing. So, so obviously that has come out of my camera. That's what it is from there. I've renamed stuff in my camera. I do it for different cameras so I know where the files come from when I'm looking at it. You can either just click into there and type a new file name and that would be done with it. So type it whatever you want. Now, if you change that file name, that changes the original file. It's not changing any of the contents, it's non-destructive still, but it is changing the file name. So it will do that on your disk. You can do it just on export. So you could change the file name only when you export, but then if you've got a file and you go, I want to find that original, you don't know what it's called. So you've got to weigh that up. I don't necessarily think that's the best thing to do. I might use it for certain clients for certain projects, but really I'd put the file name correct in the first place. Now, something I tend to do is create a title. Um, Winter Wonderland might not be the best title for that, but it's a title. And if I click this little option box at the side of file name up here, we can select what we want. Now these are default ones that are there, or I can edit and create something new. Now what I want to show you is a naming convention which I think will do you well in the future. Okay, so I have put TL at the front. I have done that because there's multiple people in this business. So I like to know that that was my photograph. I know who to go to to say, go and edit this, go and do this, etc, etc. We then have the date. I always start the date with the year first, then the month, then the day, because that is going to keep it perfectly organized in the file system, because it's going to go numerical down. If you do it with two digits, don't really advise it, I do the full four digits for the year, but if you did it the other way around, you're going to get the 1st of Feb next to the 1st of March. You're not going to get it the first, second, third, and then it goes on to March because of the way it's organized. So I tend to do that. I then pick up the title, which as you saw are there, I did Winter Wonderland. And then I do a sequence. I won't always use a sequence. So in this case, I don't need a sequence. It's just one single file. But if I was going to rename all of those there for Winter Wonderland, then yes. I would use a sequence, so it's 001, 002 at the end, and so on. Now you can see here it says example TL underscore 2020 12 28 winter wonderland.nef. If I just click OK onto that, it keeps it as a custom setting. I can save that as a totally unique setting for the future. Click OK, it's gone and rename that file. If I now go and export that, and let's put it into specific folder, let's go and choose a folder. So I'm just going to export that. If we go and have a look at that file now, it's dropped it into there, Winter Wonderland TL, as we described. That can stay, can go anywhere, can go on websites, this, that, it's always going to have that name. I know where to find that original file if I need to. I sell some of my landscapes and they're on the website, they've got the name, I can attribute it to that file, it's easy to find. I put it on social media, it's easy to find, that's it. No hassle, easy to find on the thing. So if we go, let's go and find that drive. La 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 la. Let's go into portfolio, personal, 2020, 
snow. And here we go. So we've got all these files here. It's going to be really difficult to find. But if I go down to the bottom, there's my Winter Wonderland. So it's renamed the associated JPEG with it as well. Although we don't use that, I always copy it across because space really isn't a big issue nowadays, especially with JPEGs. Then we've got the NF and then we've got the XMP because I always write out the XMP in case Lightroom ever screws up. I could import everything and it's got everything in the XMP files as well. All those changes that I did to make that file look the way it does. Separate tip, extra bonus. Um, that's it. I think you should rename your files that way, um, especially in that order with your date at the front because you might go, oh, I did something last year. You know that you can search for last year. And if you will notice that in my directories, I keep my directories labeled that way as well. When I import new stuff, I've always got the date at the start because it makes it so much easier to find the file. So if we go back to here, you'll see that all of these folders here I've all got the date at the front. Year, month, so much easier to find. I know I did something last year, I know I did something last week. I haven't got to search for it. It's in chronological order and that's what you need. Hope you like that. Thumbs up if you did. Subscribe for any future bits and pieces. If there's something you'd like to know in Lightroom that I haven't covered, leave a comment down below. We'll get to it and we'll sort that out for you. See you on the next one.